In this video, you'll learn an easier way to shoot a 360 photo with a DSLR or any camera using a ring mount panoramic head. Check out these amazing photos. I love this one. Here's me. And here's Ben. These 360 photos were shot on DSLR by master 360 photographer Peter van den Bengar. He's won several awards including 360 Cities Panoramic Video of the Year Award. He also beat out other expert 360 photographers to win the grand prize at IVRPA's Street View Challenge 2018. To get the spectacular angles for his photos, Peter often uses a DSLR on top of a very tall pole. How? With this. It's a ring mount panoramic head. Here to show us how and why to use a ring mount is Peter himself. Hi, my name is Mick and you're watching 360 Rumors, the resource that 360 shooters trust for in-depth camera reviews and innovative techniques. Hey guys, it's Mick um, and I'm here with Peter. Um, and last week, uh, I showed you this video for how to find the nodal point with a multi-row pattern head. This time, we're going to try something a little bit different. This time, we're going to use a ring mount. And Peter here is an expert, so let's take it away, Peter. So this is the ring mount, and as you can see, it's a single row. It's, yes. not, it's not a multi row. And this is the whole panoramic head right here. Here, and it's, this, it's this two pieces. Plus the it's, ring. it's the the ring oh. which holds this, and, and it's, then the it's a rotator, rotator. Is, and this right. is an exactly a ninety degree rotator. Sure. So it okay. fixes at ninety degrees. What's the advantage of using a ring mount compared to multi row panel head? Well, then you can take images. Much quicker, of course. Mm -hmm. I just need four sets of images mm. in every wind direction, every 90 degrees. I take one image or three images if I want to do HDR. Uh -huh. uh, if you want to do extreme HDR, you can take five, seven, whatever. Sure. But three is, is usually okay. Great. Uh, and that's the biggest advantage. Mm -hmm. There's a dis maybe a little bit of disadvantage is that yeah, your output resolution will be limited by just those four images. Mm -hmm. But I'm using a Canon 5DS camera, which is a 50 megapixel image uh, wow. sensor. Okay. And uh, so what's your final stage? Resolution. My final stitch resolution is around 18,000 by 9,000 pixels. Nice. Which is more than enough. Right. <laughs> All right. So, All right, so yeah. what we do is we have a Nodal Ninja uh, rotator. Right. Which, and which, which one is this? This is the uh, Nodal Ninja Ultimate R1. Right. Uh, the difference with an R10, if I have it correctly, is that you can do this. You can tilt it forward if you really want to shoot the floor. Right. I hardly use that, but sometimes mm -hmm. if you're in a hotel room and they have some very detailed carpeting mm -hmm. or carpeting going on, uh, yeah, then that's the only way because you will never be able to paint that in Photoshop. Sure. Course. So I take a fifth picture just right. for, for the floor and okay. I paint that in. Oh, you prefer to point it down than yeah. to hold it like that? Yeah, because I need it needs to be stable. I'm mm. shooting HDR images, so mm. that's in bracketing mode. Right. Uh, if it's a full frame uh, sensor, then you need to have a 12 millimeter uh, lens. This mm. is an 815 millimeter, which I can adapt, but I, I set it to 12, and then you, do, you won't have a gap if you look down and up. If you stitch, Amazing, the, right? if you stitch the images. With one row. Yeah. yeah, with one row. For the panorama to be fully spherical, the 180 degree field of view must fit within the long edge of the frame. A circular fisheye will work. Here are some examples. A partial circular fisheye will also work as long as the 180 degree field of view fits within the long edge of the frame. Here are some examples. A full frame fisheye is where the 180 degree field of view fits within the diagonal of the frame, but the long edge and short edge have less than 180 degree field of view. A full frame fisheye will not be fully spherical with a single row panel head like the Nodal Ninja R series. Alright, so can you show us like how to find the nodal point with this? Well, this is uh, maybe or hard to, to explain on camera here, but what mm -hmm. you do to find the nodal point is you actually put uh, uh, some fine uh, line in front of one meter in front of your camera mm -hmm. and you have another one, mm -hmm. a vertical line I mean, mm -hmm. uh, about 10 meters or 20 meters further away. Mm -hmm. What you do is you need to find the nodal point and you have to shift 
the camera oh, to the front so and to the is, back. This is what you, you move. So it's yeah. so it's very similar to the to the method for finding a nodal point for a multi row pan head, except that you only move one axis. Yes, correct. You don't even need to like find the middle of. No, the, no, no, no. No. Well, it oh. is in the middle, of course. I mean, yeah, this is I calibrated, so it's 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 already it's wow. in that center. Ex yeah, excellent. And so um, so can you show us like uh, when you shoot a panel panorama with this? Yeah. Yeah. I can. Uh, what yeah. I do is I put it in manual mode, yes. uh, my, my camera, because I'm. All right. I know how to handle the numbers, okay. but I right, can I'll give stay you, on this side. So I let's can, take one. I can give you some examples. Yes. In this case, I put it at ISO 400. It yeah. can be lower. Will be a little bit less noise. F11 or anything between F8 and F11. That's my uh, trick. That For I full frame, it's if you need to be closer to like a, you need a deeper depth of field. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But for. For APS-C F8, you think it's enough? Yeah, normally yeah. it is enough. Right. It also depends if, if, if you're looking or if you're in an interior and it's small or if you're in a, mm, yeah, a large sure. scale room, right. then, then higher is maybe a little bit better. Mm. Um, and then I measured the light and uh, it's pretty mm -hmm. easy here. Uh, my camera allows me to input the ISO, the mm -hmm. F11, and then sure. it's going to measure if it's uh, here, I need one thirteenth of a second. Sure. So always remember manual balance, manual white balance, manual exposure, and manual focus. Yeah, and I choose not the automatic white balance because mm. in every direction it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. But I pick what I think is needed. And I have to guess here, raw? and I shoot always in raw mm. yeah. for maximum flexibility and yeah. image quality. Right? Correct, correct. Yes. So I've set that, and mm -hmm. now it's time to take pictures. So I double mm -hmm. check. I set my fisheye lens at one oh, meter. Oh, you marked yours for the hyperfocal yes. distance. Yes, yes. Excellent. Yes. One meter, 12 millimeter, and I start taking pictures. I have a timer of two seconds. Sure, to avoid the, just shut the yeah. shake. I have to redo this because this was not in bracketing mode. Oh. Now, in bracketing mode, right. minus two EV, zero, and plus oh, two EV. Oh, so your, your gap is two EV? That's yeah, it. yeah, okay. and that's the gap that I use. Okay. Some people use a little bit less, some okay. will use uh, higher. Right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Ah, oh, you automatically make it, it is. for bracketing. Yeah, so now so two, two seconds, three images, right. minus two, zero, and plus two EP. Excellent. And I do that in every direction. Sure. And I make sure I'm not in the way. Right. <laughs> and we don't have any uh, uh, shadows and that kind of stuff. So, mm. next image. <laughs> And now facing the camera, so the camera will be on it. <laughs> there you go. Excellent, thank you. So what's, what's your preferred stitching software? Uh, PT GUI. PT GUI, you like it's, that. It's uh, by Joosting, I yes, think his yes, name is. Uh, yes. A famous Dutch guy in the right. world of pan, uh, panoramic images. Yeah. Would you say this is the most popular stitching one? Uh, uh, auto pano is also good. Mm. Uh, actually, I use multiple. Um, mm. If it doesn't work out automatically in PD GUI, then I quickly start and try uh, uh, the other one from Color. Uh -huh. uh, and else, yeah, it's manual work in, in PD GUI, sure. of course. But most of the time, I use PD GUI. Yeah. It's, it's fast. It's, 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 yeah, I know the software very well. So yeah. then, then you know your way around. Right. That's, that's very good. Well, what's your website? Site. Yeah. My website is uh, littleplanet.be. Uh, yeah, there you Am can find amazing, all my work. amazing work. You guys, check it out. This all right. If you want to learn from the experts, this is the guy. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. See you in 360. <laughs> yeah.